Welcome to Diabetes Primetime, everybody. We are so delighted to have you here tonight, where we are blessed to have the wonderful Hope Warshaw as our guest this evening. So Hope is an extremely accomplished diabetes educator and the author of several wonderful ADA titles, uh, like Diabetes Meal Planning and Eat Out, Eat Healthy, uh, the guide to healthy restaurant eating. And that is actually our topic for tonight. Uh, Hope is incredibly practical and realistic, one of the reasons why I love her advice so much. And she is going to be chatting with us about how to eat out and still be healthy, and also taking your questions about the challenges of restaurant eating that you come across. So, Hope, are you ready to get started? I am so excited <laughs> to be here. Excellent, we're, we're so honored that you decided to join us. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about um, why we eat out so much. I read recently that Americans eat five meals out every week, which shocked me. That is just so much. Tell me how you see that's changed over time and why that's such a problem for us. So I'll probably age myself with giving you this answer, but um, no, it used to be that people just ate out once in a blue moon. It was they, you know, they took mom out for Mother's Day, or you went out to celebrate a birthday, or an anniversary, or you went out with your grandparents, and that was very special. So I mean, once in three months, once a month at most. And I mean, when you think about it, there were just, food wasn't nearly as available or accessible or as, so you know, the quantities that we have today. And, um, so really restaurant eating has changed from once in a blue moon to the way that we get the job of eating done. I love, I've read that you've said that before, that it, we're eating out today to just get the job done, get the three meals that we right. need. And so why is that a problem and what should we do about it? So I think the, the big problem is that back to yesteryear, we still think about restaurant meals as special occasions. <laughs> so if we're eating restaurant meals an average of five times a week, and I think there are plenty of people who Do eat more, than uh, more frequently sure. than five times a week, that, and if you're managing all of those times you eat out as, oh, this is a special occasion, and I can splurge here, and I can splurge there, mm -hmm. um, that becomes a problem. That's one point. But another is that restaurant meals in and of themselves tend to be larger portions, meals tend to be higher in fat and higher in sodium, and then they also tend to be lacking in fruit, which I actually say that fruit is ostensibly missing in action That's in true. restaurants. Mm -hmm. Vegetables, sure you can get them, um, but they tend to be few and far between. Like you really have to work harder at getting a good bit of vegetables on your plate. Um, at least in American types of restaurants, we're very meat-centric. And when I, or I should probably use the term protein-centric. Uh, so we tend to eat more protein than we need. Whole grains are really pretty hard to find. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, even today, you know, you can go into an Asian restaurant and while more and more are serving brown rice, there still are plenty that, that yeah. still just serve white rice. So it's like the things that we should be eating more of and we're trying to work at encouraging people to eat more of your vegetables, your fruit, your whole grains, legumes, your, your mm -hmm. beans and peas are harder to get at restaurants mm -hmm. and it's just easier to overeat. Got it. So it's oh, so really quickly, I want to say hi to Cindy in Kentucky. I want to say hi to Bibi in Toronto. Gosh, we've got so many folks joining us right now. Um, hi to Peg and Carol in Pennsylvania and hi to Phyllis. We are so glad you're here with us. Thank you so much. So Hope, what I hear you saying is a couple things. Restaurant meals are have a lot of the stuff that's not so good for us and right. not so much of the stuff that we should be eating more of. That's what I'm hearing you say. Correct. So therefore, I think one of the big messages around restaurant eating is I'm not here in any way, shape, or form to say don't eat restaurant meals. Sure. I mean, you, Absolutely. You build me as being practical and realistic. <laughs> we are going to eat out. It's 2018. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. um, so I think one of the, the practical concepts is Really, if 
I mean, I'm a big believer when you're trying to make behavior changes, when you're trying, you know you have to make some changes in your eating habits, is to really do some self-assessment and to say, okay, and you know, honesty is the best policy. Absolutely. You're only cheating yourself if exactly. you're not being honest yeah, about how much you're eating. Tell that be true and all the other expressions that we know about honesty. Um, but really think really honestly about how many meals, and beyond just meals, it, it's the snacking. I oh, mean, we're right. in a snacking culture today. So how many snacks are you eating out? How, you know, what are your trips to you know what coffee place uh, <laughs> oh gosh i'm particularly guilty of yeah. that one and how many lunches and maybe how many dinners so and then think about do you really need right to could do a, could all a that planning. restaurant eating? yeah could a right. little planning right. of, avoid some right. of those meals right. out where you could be brown bagging it sometimes right. rather than just stopping and eating right if something. my autopilot for <clears throat> breakfast is running by a coffee shop and ending up with a, you know, even a croissant or a muffin, you know, or, yeah. muffin or, I mean, there just aren't a lot of healthy choices. Right. Whereas, you know, just pre-plan, get that meal at home, eat healthier. Right. Get and, that fruit that you're going to have you know, a harder yeah. time finding. And you get more money in your pocket <laughs> if you go ahead and do well, that. And that is such a good point, too, mm -hmm. because we talk about eating healthy is more expensive. But honestly, eating out is really kind of what can be so challenging. So I just want to say hi to a couple more folks who are here with us. Cindy Lou and Autumn, two of my favorite people in our group. So nice to have you here. Um, Susan Ennis in Canada, Robin and Sarah, and Lori in Ontario. Welcome to all of you folks. I'm so glad you're here. Uh, so coming back to this idea. So what I would do is sit down and say, okay, I'm eating out three nights a week and I'm eating lunch two days a week. And how can I think about mm -hmm. how I might be mm -hmm. able to do a little better at, with eating at home for some of those meals? Right. Right. And tell me, you talk about, and I want to do a quick plug for Hope's book here, Eat Out, Eat Healthy. It's a fantastic manual for anyone who's looking to eat out and be healthier. Um, she has a copy of it right here if we want to pull it out. But in it, she talks about the 10 pitfalls of restaurant eating. And I want us to talk about those right now because not only does um, Hope identify the challenges of it, she also talks about strategies and they're, because it's Hope, they're very realistic strategies of how to deal with them. Tried and true. I <laughs> she, yes, exactly. She does it's some a herself. tough job. But <laughs> else I do. So you talked about one of the challenges, the biggest challenge with restaurant eating is portion control. It is. What would you recommend to anyone who is trying to figure out how to eat less at a restaurant? So I mean, we really have to talk a little bit about different styles of restaurants as oh, well. Oh, great point. Because, I mean, you know, there's fast food restaurants and fast casual restaurants where I actually divide restaurants into two major categories. And I think that's helpful for sort of some tips and tactics. So one is the walk up and order restaurants. And that just paints a picture for people. Um, and then kind the of like other your Panera, is, Panera's, McDonald's, exactly, you know, right. the whole fast casual and fast food. Got exactly. It. So you walk up, you see the menu board and you order and either you take it to your table or you sit down and someone's bringing it to you. And then the other is your, uh, your sit down and order restaurants Got it. where you're sitting down um, you know, you may be served some bread, you may be served some Chinese noodles in a Chinese restaurant, some chips and dips in a, a Mexican restaurant, um, but you're given a menu and you're contemplating your order, you're giving your order and you've got a little bit of, of time. Um, so Strategies um, are different for each different kind of restaurant then. Right, strategies are different for sort of you know, the big categories of restaurants, but they're also different in all of your different ethnic um, types of restaurants as well. But in, in terms of, let's just, rather than going 10, yeah. ten pitfalls, and yes, yeah, I focus. talk about those in Eat Out, Eat Well, and I cover each one of them, but I think really the top three to really zero in on and if people can establish some strategies around these pitfalls, then they're gonna really have some success. So, and these to me are also in priority order. Number one is portions, is some mastery around 
controlling the amount of food that's set in front of you. Okay, and we would definitely want to come back and right. talk about that because there's you have some really good suggestions on how to do that. And that's hard to do. <laughs> it is. <laughs> you have to be dedicated. <laughs> and disciplined kind of from the beginning, for sure. Um, and then the next one I would say is really working to limit the amount of fat in the food that you get. Um, restaurants love to use fat. And um, they use it because it adds taste to food. They use it because it, it actually gives them a little bit of leeway of foods, um, you know, being drier, gives them a little bit more time to get food to the table. And I think the third piece is the sodium count. And for people with diabetes, particularly type 2 diabetes, I mean, three, That's a big three deal. quarters of people have high blood pressure. And so, so that is a big deal. But and one point I want to make to sort of bring these three pitfalls together, more related to strategies, is if you control portions, you will by nature reduce the amount of fat you eat and, and reduce salt. the amount of sodium in the food that you eat. So Absolutely. they really are They're all tied together. Exactly. Correct. All right, so one of my favorite um, suggestions that Hope has is beware the free food at the beginning of the meal from a restaurant perspective. So right. tell us tell us how do you do that? Because <laughs> I've fallen victim to chips and salsa more times than I can count. <laughs> <laughs> so that's really in that sit down and order restaurant. And you know, again, it's a variety of items in American type of restaurants you're getting, you know, bread and typically not whole grain bread, so it's pretty much refined flour breads. Um, but I really, I think there's sort of two strategies and it, it's all, all these different situations in our lives have to lend themselves to different strategies. I mean, you can be in a business situation where, at least for me, I'm not as comfortable doing certain things as I am if it's my family or if it's some close friends that you're you're very comfortable with so let's sort of think about this um you know you're with your family or you're with them, some a small group of close friends and that basket of bread and butter get delivered to the table you can simply say if everyone's agreeable you know would you mind taking that away we really don't want to eat that mm -hmm. um, or we want to save our calories for your other delicious foods I mean I think sure. there's always <laughs> there's nice a way to do it and be complimentary sure. right, <laughs> right. Um, and again you can do that with the salsa and chips you can do that with the Chinese noodles which I wanted to the other night in the Chinese restaurant that we were in <laughs> but I kept my hands away from it um, and I guess that's the other point if you're with a group of people where you, you know those Chinese back. noodles sure. are not yeah. going anywhere because <laughs> people's hands are digging into it and dipping it in sweet sweet sauce um, <laughs> is that you just keep sort of forcing them to other keep areas. it on the other side of the table <laughs> out of sight out of keep mind keep it to yourself <laughs> right exactly awesome so um, tell, tell us a little bit about when you order. I, one of uh, the things that Hope says that I love is portion control starts when you order. Right. So what does that look like? So that really looks like being really careful from the get-go, from the point that you're thinking about what you're ordering, that you don't get too much food put in front of you. I mean, there are research studies that that say and this is true for kids which is what makes me so mad about parents who like portion food out for kids i mean we really should be letting kids really portion foods out for themselves but the more that we get in front of us the more that we're going to eat no it's enjoyable <laughs> we like we like eating um it's really hard to stop ourselves and you know many of us are members of the clean plate club and so it's really hard to stop. So the more that you can control the amount of food that you get in front of you, the easier it will be to not overeat. That is an excellent point. So I just want to jump in here and uh, say that a few of our, our folks are, so Crystal, Crystal Guest says she uses the um, Carb Manager app on her phone to figure out carbs, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. 
Carol Zahosky, hello Carol. She says, if a menu only lists the calorie count of a meal, is there any um, app or anything to use um, to figure out the carb count? I mean, you know, to me there are carb counts aplenty and carb apps aplenty. I mean, I think that off the top, uh, one that people often recommend is Calorie King. Um, and that lists a lot of nutritional information for a whole bunch of different... Right, and, and they, I mean, if we're talking specifically about restaurants, um, they tend to have a good bit of um, restaurant information. I mean, one of the things I think about carb counting apps and getting carb counts is I have for years been a big believer in people really developing their own personal food database. Mm. And, um, you know, I think we hear a lot of, oh, this this calorie counting app or carb counting app has, you know, hundreds of thousands of foods. And to me, that never quite matters that much because what matters is that it has the foods that you eat. The restaurants you go <laughs> so to. So right. I really believe that people would be better served by just building their own personal food database. And, you know, we just, Knowing the information for the yeah, foods you eat. Yeah, we're pretty much creatures of habit when it, <laughs> when it comes to food. You know, whether we're going to the supermarket and we're buying foods and the meals that we make at home or, or we're going to restaurants. Um, many of us frequent similar kinds of restaurants. So try to get the carb counts pretty precise for the foods and the meals that you feel like you eat very frequently. That is fantastic. So Autumn says, I find that if I look at the menu and choose my meal before I go out to eat, I don't feel deprived or feel like cheating. Mm -hmm. um, that sounds like a great strategy to me. Yeah, I mean, I would tell Autumn, you know, kudos to you for finding a strategy that works for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. And thanks for passing it on. <laughs> and actually, speaking of other good strategies, Sarah Tracy Johnson says, I pack fruits and veggies with me every day that I'm on the road. And I know when I'm in airports, I'm always packing mm -hmm. nuts and fruits and vegetables that, you know, if I don't find something healthy, mm -hmm. I have a choice. Tell us kind of what your strategy is. Do you have tips and tricks as you travel for how I, you... I definitely do. Um, so I have those little, I don't know, what are they, two or three ounce little Tupperware containers um, I always have one full of um, of, nut, of mixed nuts. Oh, they that's... are salted because I like salt. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, and I mean, I, I think foods like um, baby carrots, I mean, I just think, you know, they're great. They're pretty, um, as vegetables go, non-perishable, certainly more than, <laughs> you know, cherry tomatoes. But I, th I really think that these... You know, I think years ago I used to more go to like the little Ziploc bags, mm -hmm. but the plastic containers that really they're hard and they're not going to get oh they're not going to get damaged make or crushed a whole lot more sense. One of my go to at least there it's in the airports and I do travel some is that combination of about few ounces of hummus with the, yes. the pretzels on Those top are of great. It. It's yeah. like a crunchy kind of mm -hmm. little salty snack. Yep. No, and hummus yep. is just a great go-to. Yep. yep. And then, I mean, fruit is I think the one of the easiest fruits to carry with you is apples um, because they're, you know, they can stay out of the refrigerator for a number of hours and they're bananas. Yeah, bananas are good and you tend to find them that but depending on where you keep them, they can get, they can get be mushy. <laughs> That's true, for sure. So I know a common question that a lot of people have is, you know, salads are this healthy food, aren't they? <laughs> Talk a little bit about how you think about salads when you're eating out and how to really make them be the healthy choice, because I know there's a lot of pitfalls with salads. Sure, uh, definitely, for sure. And we, you know, people, we tend to think, okay, I'll order salad and feeling very virtuous that, you know, you've ordered something healthy, but, um, you know, you can add insult to injury of all kinds of different foods, and salad is certainly one of them. Um, you know, so you gotta, I mean, let's just focus sort of on those entree salads, which, first yeah. of all, um, you know, they can just be humongously big, and many times those entree salads are big enough for you to certainly take home half of it or split it with um, someone that you're eating, let's say that's what you're doing for lunch. Um, you know, 
splitting and sharing that, having a healthy cup of soup, you know, that might be a really good lunch. But be very careful when you're looking at what else is there. I mean, I think because everyone knows a cob salad, it's really a good example to use. Um, I mean, they tend to have bacon, they tend to have blue cheese or cheddar cheese. Um, you know, there's also some healthy things, there's a cube chicken and typically some diced tomatoes and maybe some diced cucumbers. I mean, that's all great. Um, I, one general concept that I would really want to get across tonight is people need to get feeling very comfortable, more comfortable in making special requests. Ah, it, special requests in restaurants. It, it yeah. seems to me that people don't feel comfortable. Like, They're intimidated. I, yeah, yeah, I don't want to I, ask for something special. Exactly. Sure. Exactly. So just feel really comfortable to say, you know, I like most of the ingredients in this cob salad, but I really don't want that blue cheese, or I really don't want that bacon, or could you bring that bacon but put it on the side so therefore you can control the amount you, that you want. So salads, <laughs> think about what you're, get, you're adding on to salads, but then the real kicker, and I know what you're getting at, is the dressing. Oh yeah, and actually so. I have to say, so we've got Sarah saying that she just dips her fork in the dressing mm -hmm. and then, which is a great trick. Yep. And uh, Crystal says, take the croutons off. That's her big, <laughs> that's another one well, of those add-ons that adds a lot of calories. One. So that's tell us right. about dressing, because I know. So dressings, okay. So I always think that America's favorite dressings are either blue cheese or Thousand Island dressing. <laughs> Probably. Which, <laughs> Both which, delicious. you know, they're running <laughs> You know, how many tablespoons are you putting on? But they probably run 60, 70 calories per level tablespoon. Wow. And people are typically using wow. more than that. Plus the fact they're made with some ingredients that may have cholesterol and uh, potentially more saturated fat than you want. But I am not in favor of eating a miserably tasting fat fee free or light salad dressing. So again, back to the practical and realistic, I really think that, that people need to use a salad dressing that they enjoy. Absolutely. But Be always, smart. always, always order it on the side. And that puts you in the driver's seat of the amount that you use. And um, then you can use a small amount I recommend that people ask for some vinegar on the side. Um, I know I'm a balsamic vinegar liker, so I would order that, and most restaurants today have that, or red wine vinegar, but get that on the side. Use a little bit of your salad dressing and um, really dilute that down and spread it around with a vinegar. And if no vinegars are there, can ask for some fresh lemons or limes oh, and uh, use that as well. But um, I think you said it was Carol who was using. Uh, the... um, I think it was Susan actually. Susan. Now I've lost yeah. the comment, but um, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, the um, the dip, you know, dip as long as you're not dipping too deeply, um, <laughs> is is also another trick. I mean, I I think the message here, Ansley, is explore. Find things that work for you. Find things that you can practically live with that don't feel like deprivation. Oh my God, I'm gonna like clench my fingers and I can only do this for a week, but I'm gonna grin and bear it because You're not that's gonna not to gonna that. work. Absolutely. Exactly. So I, I just have to say, Crystal, who's a lovely, very funny woman in the group, she says, if I'm getting pushback about subbing vegetables for french fries, I'm not above dropping the D card, meaning saying that she has diabetes, which I think, you know, I think that's totally fair. If you are mm -hmm. getting pushback for making a healthy substitution, like, absolutely, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. say that. <laughs> so yeah. great. And yeah. actually, you know, we've got so many great suggestions in here. One um, lady, I guess it was Sean Martinez, actually says, what can I eat in the morning? Now, this isn't a restaurant-specific question, mm -hmm. but I know that um, what to have for breakfast is a real issue for lots of people, and Sean's getting some good suggestions from people watching, but I'd love to hear from you, Hope. What do you say to people who just say, I don't know what to do for breakfast? Well, I mean, I've for breakfast, I think, is a really good meal to be on autopilot. Um, you know, if we're getting up and we're 
do what it's you need to do chaotic to, anyway in the to morning. get out the door. Just be on automatic pilot, making a meal that you don't, oh my gosh, what am I going to eat? And what do I feel like eating? And like, don't even go there. Just be on autopilot. I mean, the what you eat depends on, you know, really what recommendations you're following for your diabetes. Um, I mean, I am a believer as a registered dietitian and certified diabetes educator that um, people can comfortably and healthfully eat carbohydrate. And I feel that people can eat some fruit and they can eat some whole grains and enjoy them. So um, I would go to things like whole grain cold cereal. Um, and that sort of forces you to enjoy some milk with that. And milk is a healthy food. Um, you know, have a half a banana, cut that into that. I mean, there's your, your one bowl and, and you're done. Um, I think hard boiled eggs are a great morning item and that's something where don't boil one egg at a time, you know, <laughs> like Absolutely. if you've got a week in front of you, you know, boil a half dozen eggs if that's going to like be your go-to breakfast, breakfast. Right? Absolutely. or, you know, if it's a whole grain piece of toast and some um, part skim cheese melted on it, you know, throw a few tomatoes on that, get in some some vegetables that's another um, oh, that's a great idea quick and yeah. easy breakfast um, peanut butter and yes peanut butter is a pretty calorie dense food but it's also a very healthy food and I think sometimes we don't think about all the other nut butters oh, that there are butter. so almond Absolutely. butter cashew butter you know you can find all of those um, options today that's so fantastic. So I want to circle back to what you mentioned a minute ago, where if you feel like you're white knuckling it, you know, you're trying to just do everything perfectly, mm -hmm. yep. you're not going to be successful. And Susanna says, you know, I don't feel as if I'm dieting. It's just a new way of eating. Oh, so thank we, you. Yes, I know. That's, that's such a wonderful <laughs> thank you, way Susanna. to think about it. And that's really music, music to my heart, because that is exactly the way it needs to be for people to be successful. And you know, I think you, I mean, I talk about it in terms of just like learning to live in the gray. People are so black and white about mm. food and food choices and I'm on a diet or I'm off a diet and I'm on a diet and off a diet. And we're talking about diabetes here. I mean, we're talking about managing a health condition mm -hmm. and you have to learn how to live in the gray, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Because life is going to throw situations exactly. at you where it's not going to be possible right. to do everything I mean, perfectly. Life happens, and you know what? You're going to want that sweet dessert sure. in a restaurant, and you're going to be with a bunch of people, and it's cool. You, ha you decide that you want a spoonful or two of that, and it satisfies that sweet tooth that you have, that we all have, and you move on and don't beat yourself up and don't, you know, I was bad, I cheated, you know, all that language that is so negative. Because ultimately that's not something you're going to be able to stick with. So, right. you know, thinking of how am I going to, so, so actually let's talk about dessert. That's kind of the other D word, I think. <laughs> how do you recommend that someone incorporate dessert into a healthy eating plan? So I think the, the whole deal with incorporating dessert really does need to be individualized because you know you got to know what's going on with your blood glucose levels you also really need to know what's going on with your blood fat levels your cholesterol your ldl your hdl so glad you talked about yeah. that that it's not just about blood glucose i'm sorry to interrupt right. but that's just such an important concept right. yes it is and so you know what are your goals in in your whole picture mm -hmm. of managing diabetes and another piece of this is how important are sweets to you? You know, Great I mean, question. there are people that, you know, just live and die for something sweet. And there are others that say, you know, sweets don't really matter that much I don't to know me. those people, but yes, I hear the excess. <laughs> <laughs> so with all that said, I think, you know, you sort of have to make some packs with yourself mm -hmm. is like, what's going to do it for you? What's going to satisfy your yen for something sweet mm -hmm. you know can you restrict it to a dessert once a week at a restaurant that you eat at if it's a restaurant meal that you really want that at 
is it that you know little piece of um, Nestle's Crunch? That's just because that's my thing. Um, <laughs> that you know that that's from the Halloween candy that's left that we keep for about the year until we replace it with the next <laughs> Halloween candy it that's forever. Left over. <laughs> In our orange pumpkin, of course. Um, you know, but just. At night when I'm just like wanting just something a little sweet or even a couple of Hershey kisses can do it. But so have it. Um, mm -hmm. And I think the, the other big thing about sweets is just make sure that you're just every morsel of the sweets that you do choose to eat are really delicious sweets. Absolutely. So don't come. Don't, don't waste don't, your calories. exactly. Don't waste your dessert on something. That's I don't know not about you perfect. guys, but I don't have any calories to waste. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is so fantastic. So we're just going to take one more question here. I'm just going through here. Um, actually, someone asks, "Can you explain why whole grain is good for you?" And actually, this is Sarah Tracy. She says, "My husband doesn't think it is." <laughs> so okay, let's let's talk to sure. Sarah Tracy's husband yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> why are whole why are whole good? grains good for you? As opposed to refined grains? I guess I mean, that's that, what he's asking, okay. or what, what do whole um, grains provide from a nutritional they, standpoint? They have more nutrients, um, some B vitamins, and they also have dietary fiber, uh, which is good for we you. We all can use a lot more of, for sure. Oh my gosh, yeah. For <laughs> and I guess that's probably one of the things that restaurant meals are missing as well, probably fiber. Definitely, oh, because excellent. it's more refined grains. Excellent. Well, listen, Hope, thank you so much for joining You're kidding. us. An I, hour has gone no, by. No, no, 30 minutes has gone by. We oh, usually okay. do about 30 minutes, and um, we cannot thank you enough for joining us. Any last thoughts before we wrap up? Anything we didn't cover that you want to get to? Boy, I can't think of anything off the top of my head, but I wish you all the best of luck in your journey towards eating healthier. It's still January, so it's a good time to, you know, just sort of... Get the not making resolutions. I'm not a big believer in resolutions, but just maybe more being resolute in and intentional in your food choices and your actions around food. That is fantastic. Be resolute and be sure to check out Hope's book, um, Eat Out, Eat Well, all about eating well at restaurants. And we look forward to seeing you for the next Diabetes Primetime. Thanks so much, folks. Take care.